All right, it's time to spotlight big tech and what we've learned from third quarter earnings season so far. For that, we welcome in Daniel Newman, CEO of the Futurum Group. He joins me here at the desk. Daniel, so good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we, of course, when it comes to big tech, there's a few key names that have really dominated the spotlight, Apple being one of them this week. But you have a list of quiet tech earnings winners that you brought with you. Tell us who came out on top there. Yeah, you hit it with Apple, and Microsoft was the big winner this quarter. I just want to say that up front. But I'll, I'll, I'll spotlight three. So the first one was Qualcomm. Qualcomm, a company that's largely known for handset uh, mobile device manufacturing, uh, been a really tough year for handsets, for PCs. The company beat, it raised, and it was finally able to talk about China in a way that was positive for the business. We've seen so much conflict with China, chip companies, and Qualcomm's dependence on that market, they saw for the first time mid-double-digit growth in activity in, in silicon for the chipsets for their handsets. That was really important for the company, enabling them to beat. But they also saw some really strong numbers in automotive and had a big announcement around a future PC, ARM-based PC, that they're going to enter into the market, making them a competitor. And the specs show it has a real shot of competing in that, in that tough-to-enter space. The next one is going to be ServiceNow. Uh, had the chance to speak to CEO Bill McDermott. Um, he obviously feels very good, but this is one of these where the AI hype meets AI reality. Bill McDermott has been long talking about this kind of cycle towards automation, productivity, and efficiency, but that company, against all the backdrops of pressures, of cost cuttings, has solutions, services, and products in its portfolio that basically enable companies to get more efficient, more productive, and invest in generative AI capabilities. And then the third one, and this was a toss-up. I was deciding between Intel and AMD, but AMD kind of always gets a little more tailwind. Intel. So sat down with Pat Gelsinger uh, after earnings, and they, you know, the bar has been lowered, but they're stepping over it, and they're stepping over it more consistently. They made a commitment to getting five processes out in four years. That means their next chip, mm -hmm. getting it out in four years. They're meeting their their timelines, Caroline, and not only that, but they're actually beating on profits, revenues, and showing some meaningful growth in their foundry business. And as the U.S. is trying to fight this battle to be able to produce more of our own leading edge chips, what other company are we going to turn to? Intel is the only one, so we want to see a strong Intel, despite how the market sometimes likes to be a little tougher on them than other silicon names. All right, so those are the quiet tech winners. All three big winners this week, although Qualcomm really has had the least impressive performance in 23 from 2023 from a stock perspective. So I guess at what point does it catch up to the stock price? Well, the company is in that kind of handset devices category along with PC makers. It doesn't get the same multiple as say the Nvidia's or the mm -hmm. AMD's. And I think that really is largely because of the China dependence. I think people are concerned about the China dependence. And if you get lumped into that category of devices, it tends to be uh, very negative on that PE ratio going forward. I think the company's diversification, it's got a $30 billion automotive pipeline. And we all know how many chips are going to go into the smart cars of the future, Caroline. And as that ends up becoming reality, it's only just starting to turn to revenue. So I look at trends like that as the key trends for people to say, okay, we see a stronger, more valuable future earnings and we can put that value behind the company and behind the investment. So it's going to take a little while, but they're doing a lot of the right things in AI and in their device portfolio. And you mentioned that Microsoft was the big earnings winner in your mind. Will Microsoft continue to be the winner as you look ahead, especially as it you know, competes against quite a few companies now in the AI race? Yeah, so our internal intelligence that we track shows big investments being uh, vendor expansion and AI investment by enterprises. Microsoft is so embedded inside of every organization that they're naturally in the conversation of every company's generative and AI strategy. Now, I think it's going to be fierce competition at the cloud level. AWS is the biggest. Microsoft has the most diverse portfolio. And Google is well known for its AI innovation. Having said that, they're all going to end up inside of every enterprise. So what it's going to be is it's not fighting as a winner takes all. It's going to be fighting for the most innovative products, the most diversified portfolio, and then being able to get the largest share of wallet across the enterprise. But Microsoft just, it nailed its monetization story, Caroline. It nailed the 3% of our Azure revenue was driven by our AI innovation. And of course, $30 ahead for Copilot. 
most companies are struggling to give a clear metric. They, they, they won because they gave a clear metric. Another name in the AI space that uh, has had the opposite of stock performance as Microsoft has really been IBM. They have Watson X, it's an AI play, yet it's only up 5% year to date. Why do you think that one's out of favor? Are they just not up to snuff in terms of their, their technology? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about them because I actually put them in that quiet winner category. Uh, I've spoken to both Arvind Krishna and Jim Cavanaugh in the past week. Operationally, the company's nailing it. They've done a very good job with Watson X focused on enterprise. So the valuation is very enterprise centric. The company doesn't always pop up in some of those more high hyper growth names. They're talking mid single digit. But when it comes to execution of its hybrid cloud AI strategy, delivering to customers, I believe they announced a multi hundred million dollar Watson X business impact, but across a multi billion dollar business, people want to see that number grow faster. I like what they're doing. And by the way, Caroline, they're offering an indemnification to enterprise customers that are going to use their Watson X generative technology, which others are doing. But I think it's really important because if companies are going to bet, invest, and try to move forward with generative AI, they need to know that some of that risk of what could go wrong in the code and the, the outputs that are created, um, that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. That if it creates something that's copyright violation, if they get code that's not theirs somehow. And I think IBM's stepping up there, but look, they were, they were sturdier during the downturn of 21, 22. They actually saw some of the best performance, but now that you're seeing that more exuberance towards growth, IBM's always going to be more about stability, more about um, you know, the dividend, mm -hmm. um, and more about you know, sh long-term shareholder value. All right, we have to wrap, but I do want to ask you, because I know you've been meeting with so many of these tech executives one-on-one, -on -one. Yeah. what's the biggest hurdle or the biggest challenge that they're most concerned about looking ahead? Yeah, I think they're trying to find a way to tell an AI story and meet the market where it wants to hear about mm -hmm. how that turns to dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know we can be more productive, we can get more efficiency, ChatGPT can write a blog for us, but the, the street wants to know, is a company going to incrementally pay? Is this protection? Mm -hmm. Are you just using AI to keep a customer? They want to bet. The investors that, that you know, we're seeing, they want to bet on companies that clearly tell it an AI story that says we're going to grow revenue, we're going to grow margin, and we're going to be stickier with our customers. All right, we have to leave it there. Daniel, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for breaking all of that down for us.